Welcome back for another video. It's time for the Gaming 8 episode of The Experts, and it's a busy one this week with chips and hits flying. This series consists of hundreds of participants, including some top all-time managers and content creators. Every week we reveal the Experts team before the deadline, plus look at their transfer plans, captaincy, chip usage and more. This wisdom of the crowd approach will guide you to better decisions and a better rank this season. If you would like to up your game this season, hit subscribe to follow the content. Over the international break, we will be opening the doors for more experts to join the series, so keep an eye on Twitter. My username's bottom right to follow me. The top expert after Gaming 7 is Sergster, still top and currently 6.5k overall. He finished 2.7k last season. Of course, nothing last gaming like the rest of us. His wildcard is active for Gaming 8. Every week, we'll continue to highlight the top ranked expert. Next up is the transfer activity among the experts. Just 2% are rolling the transfer this game week as a consequence of the blanks. No fixture for Brighton, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, Leeds, Liverpool or Man United. 8% are making one transfer, also very low, 23% making two transfers and 25% are making three transfers. A few managers are making four or more transfers and a massive 40% have got the wildcard active. Since there's so many wildcards active, this week we caught up with a couple of the experts who have shared their drafts, which we'll look at shortly. One thing's for sure, we can take comfort in the sheer volume of hits the experts are taking this game week. Don't be afraid to take a hit or two if it's logical for your team. So these are the players who are the most transferred in and out by the experts heading into Game Week 8. Trippier, Mitrovic and De Bruyne are top. Bournemouth have conceded 100 crosses down Trippier's side, which is more than any other team, and it is a great fixture for Newcastle, home to Bournemouth. De Bruyne's away to Wolves this weekend, and in the same fixture last season he scored 4 goals. He was however in a different role that fixture than to be expected this weekend, assuming Haaland starts. Isaac could be a gem, only 5% owned. It's always a gamble when a player joins the Premier League and you don't know exactly what to expect. However, those who went for Haaland over the proven Kane in Gamic 1 were rewarded. For many it's a decision between Tony and Isaac. Again, Tony is a proven asset, while Isaac has the better fixture this game week. There is a question mark over Wilson, who should be back after the break. You can imagine for the amount they spent on Isaac, he continues to play. Perhaps how even reverts to a 4-4-2 at some point, which is a formation Isaac played in at Real Sociedad. Madison faces a Spurs side away who have just come off the back of a 2-0 loss to Sporting in the Champions League. It's a tough fixture, but beyond that Madison has a sea of green fixtures, so he is a good pick. Bowen has come into many managers thinking. He was stellar last season, but the form hasn't rolled over into this season, with no returns and his opening six. The fixtures are good enough to the point where the form could come. Right now, 8.1 is a lot to spend with no returns, but he's not the worst punt. No surprises when we look at the names on the most sold, more or less all of them blank in this game week. There is an opportunity to sell the Liverpool assets, Salah Trent, Luis Diaz, and then aim to buy them back in Gamic 12, which is a confirmed blank game week for Man City, meanwhile Liverpool are home to West Ham that week. So if you hop off them, make sure you've got a plan to get them back. Hence De Bruyne is a popular transfer in this game week, as you need to find about an extra 0.6 mil and you can make the switch to Salah in one move. A quick look at the chip usage and then we'll look at a couple of the expert wildcard drafts, captaincy and then the expert team. So it's an extremely busy gaming with about 40% of the experts having pulled the trigger on the wildcard. You may be wondering why they've opted for the wildcard over the free hit. In a nutshell, with the wildcard you can tackle the blanks in Gaming 8 and prepare for the fixtures beyond that too. Whereas if you free hit, you'll still need to use your wildcard if you haven't already, therefore it's a chip saved. What's also important to note here is that although 12% have used their wildcard already, none of them have pulled the trigger on the free hit. Instead, they're comfortable taking minus 4s, minus 8s, even a minus 12. There are now 14 postponed fixtures, which will become double game weeks later on, assuming FPL don't add an additional game week. Therefore, although it hurts now, taking hits over free hitting might be the way to go with a long term view, and you reap the rewards later. We've caught up with two of the experts for this episode. The first is Gio Alarcon, who's finished top 1k the last two seasons, and he has an average career rank of 3.6k. Here's his team, shared with permission. A bunch of logical picks here. Although Zaha blanks, Palace's fixtures long term are very good. He's a talisman and he's on penalties. Chelsea, another side with phenomenal fixtures ahead and under new manager Potter after the break. I asked Gio for his thoughts and he said, There's no clear standout midfielder over 8 mil. Among those with a good run of fixtures, I'm taking a punt on Sterling. Despite having a higher price than the likes of Madison, Sterling has better stats to back him up with 0.6 non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 in a Chelsea team that could improve its performances before the World Cup. 
The second draft is from Classy Football, who's finished top 10Ks two seasons playing. A lot of similarities to Gio's draft, however he's got a couple of Spurs assets, notably Son and he's captained him. A huge call considering Son's poor form, though we know what he's capable of and Leicester are yet to keep a clean sheet. We asked for his thoughts and he said, Son is the easiest route to get Salah and Gaming 9. Haaland and Mitrovic are the essential picks. I'm not sure if Isak will make the final team. I'm thinking to switch Isak with Almiron in the midfield and then Kane in front and then Santa Foden. Thanks to both for sharing their drafts with us. Onto the expert captaincy and Haaland dominates the captaincy of 79% followed by Kane on 15%. Son has 4% and Isak's captained by a few managers. It's hard to look beyond Haaland when he's yet to blank this season and with even less fixtures on he'll likely be even more captain. So the potential rank upside is massive if you bet elsewhere and it comes off but as always it carries a great risk. Gaming 9 will be an interesting one for those not on the wildcard who still own Salah as he's home to Brighton while City face Man United. Before we look at the experts team, if you've enjoyed the video and you appreciate the effort that goes into each episode, consider subscribing to the channel. So on to the expert team reveal. This is the aggregated team of their highest owned players within budget. It's difficult to project exactly how the template will look due to the sheer number of transfers this game week. however the team is as follows. Trippi undoubtedly joins the template along with Pope and Mitrovic. De Bruyne and Kane are both very viable picks and either of them may make the template in place of Salah. Thank you to Premier Fantasy Tools for providing the tools to track all the experts this season. They don't sponsor us, but do check them out at premierfantasytools.com. They've got a ton of great FPL tools at your disposal for free. premierfantasytools.com to check them out. I'll link them down below. Each game week we ask the experts to offer their insight and thoughts for the game week ahead. So much to think about this week and here's what they have to say. FPL SMR says, a hit for a blanking player is a minus two, so why not? Also, I've had enough award. I've taken a hit to upgrade him to Pope. David Gent says, a lot of people could be tempted into using the free hit this week, but now we know there'll be lots of good double game weeks later in the season, there could be more value in using it then. Having two players not playing this week could lose you between 4-10 to 10 points, but having a free hit team with four double game week players, for example, could get you 8-20 to 20 points. Pitso says, no reason to free hit, even if you only have 6 players. Jun Yang says, great opportunity to wildcard with Chelsea and Zaha, despite the blanks, I love their fixtures from Gaming 9 onwards. Mac Attack says, to help decide on my wildcard, I planned out how my teams would look with a wildcard in 8 and a wildcard in 9. My Gaming 8 team and my wildcard 8 team don't differ too much in terms of expected points. Based on that, I plan on saving the wildcard for Gaming 9 and utilising the extra information and the international break to make a stronger wildcard team moving forward. Trophy FPL says, even though I have two free transfers, the cancel fixtures have forced my hand as I would have had to take a minus four and would have still had players like Ward on my team. Why not when we have the wild card and then we have another one in Gaming 16. Big Nights United says, boring season with everyone having the same team, but not anymore. That concludes episode eight of The Experts. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please like the video before you go and subscribe for more weekly content to come all season. See you soon for the next one.